I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now we are in the month of December. Hey, we're going to start with the command of God concerning our daily bread. So are you ready? Now in all our excitement, listen, God is about to do something beautiful, something you will like today. So are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Say this to say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, we all know you today. I declare burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I began on Monday talking to you about Jesus. We need to understand who is Jesus. We need to understand his ministry to us. You know, the more you, you meet with God's children, you begin to realize that many don't really know Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, how, how would you receive his ministry? Jesus died for you. But there's a reason he died for you. He died for you because he wanted to give you life. Oh, you need to understand this. You read the scripture on Monday and I will show you again. John chapter 17. From verse 2. John 17 from verse 2. Jesus speaking here. You know, I've always said this and I'll continue to say it. This is the holiest chapter of the Bible. Praise God. As you have given him authority over all flesh. Jesus speaking. That he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. As you have given him authority over all flesh. So Jesus has the authority over all flesh. Every flesh. Then he says, and his mission is to give eternal life to not all flesh. Give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So Jesus is responsible to those that the Father has given to him. Now there's a reason it's put this way. There's a reason he didn't say that he should give eternal life to all of them. He says to as many as you have given him. Now, you remember Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. Jesus knew his ministry was to come and give us life. A question is, have you received that life from Jesus? Jesus said in verse 3, John 17, verse 3, he says, And this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He said, this is how eternal life works. This is how you know you receive eternal life. When the knowledge of God is coming to you, the knowledge of Jesus is coming to you. Now, what does that tell you? It means... To live eternal life, you've got to be receiving the knowledge of God in an increasing measure. You've got to be receiving the knowledge of Jesus in an increasing measure. So, if all you have known about Jesus was what was preached to you many years ago, you are not manifesting eternal life. We manifest eternal life, the more we know him, the more we manifest his life. 
And this knowledge is not a one-time knowledge. You can't know Jesus one time. Even the disciples that walked with him personally, do you know it got to the point they didn't know him? You remember when you read Matthew, the last chapter, when Jesus told them to come and meet him in a place in Galilee. So they went there to meet him at the mountain. When they got there to meet him, now these were the 11 disciples, the Bible says. And they got there and they saw him and worshipped. The Bible said many of them, some of them still doubted. Why were they doubting? Because they really didn't know him. This is why Paul said, no, we know man after the flesh. If we have known Christ after the flesh, we don't know him again. Why? Because there is a revealing that he reveals himself to us through the Holy Spirit. And it is that revealing when we see him, life is generated inside of us. So you are there, for example, you know, struggling with your health and you're thinking, oh God, I want to be healed of this ailment. I want to be healed of this sickness. What do I do? What do I do? I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to increase in the knowledge of God and in the knowledge of Jesus. You need a, a, an upgrading of your knowledge of Jesus. The moment your eyes are open to see him, life, eternal life is administered to you. That's how it works. If you are not increasing in the knowledge of Jesus, eternal life is not increasing in you. Now, you got saved, you know, oh, Jesus saved me. You cried, he saved you. Fine. But you know what? There are many dimensions of salvation that you're supposed to be walking in. And it can only happen when he upgrades your knowledge of him. That's why you, you know, sometimes you think you've known Jesus for a long while. One day you wake up and realize, whoa. That's what Paul meant when he says, he says, look, everything that was gained to me, I count them as dung. Why? For the knowledge of him. Not else, I'm ready to lose anything, but just so I'll get to know him. It is the same Paul that cried out in the same chapter, said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He cried out because he got to that point where, you know, you know what? Doesn't matter what I have. To know him is the best thing. Because when you know him, that which you have will increase. But when you don't know him, that which you have will decrease. It will eventually fade away. Jesus is Lord. Not just because he wants us to call him Lord. He is Lord indeed. Praise God. Not just that God made him Lord. No, no. He, ah, Librakia. He became Lord. By the things, the sacrifice he sacrificed for us. And secondly, by the ministry that the Father gave him to execute. If he's the one responsible to giving life to every man. Now, I've said this, you know, many times. You know, sometimes it, it, we, we confuse this because we think Jesus came to die for us. So we think that's all his ministry is all about. No, that was just a ministry that was actually the ministry to die or the assignment to die for us was not in the original plan of God for Jesus. You need to understand this. His original mission was to come and give life to us. But guess what? He came, by the time he came or by the time he was to come, man had the problem. Man had sold himself to the devil. So he's not going to give life to slaves. He has to first of all deliver us from the hands of the devil. So now we will be made free. The moment we are made free, then he can administer life to us. That's why the Bible says, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whomsoever the Son of Man have made free is free indeed. 
Why? Because he's got the authority from heaven. And he's not only setting you free. He sets you free and gives you life to live. And he says the life he gives to us is the abundant life. Not a life, not a beggarly life. No, it's an abundant life. So you look at yourself and you begin to ask yourself, hey, hold on a minute. Am I really living the life that Jesus brought? Do I really live eternal life? Eternal life, I've said it again. It's not just a life to live forever and ever. No, it's a quality of life. It's a quality of life, an aspect of life that belongs to God. And it belongs to God. He has willingly brought us in to that beloved life that we may live eternal life like him. So, John said, as he is, so are we in this world. Why? Because he has given us the very same life that he lives. So we are just like him in this world. Think about it. If we are just like him in this world, are you living the fullness of the life he has called you to live? When we say we are just like him in this world, we are not making positive statements. We are not making positive confessions. We are telling the truth as he is in heaven. And we are manifesting the same truth here on earth. And that's how we're going to defeat the enemy. That's how we're going to defeat Satan. That's how we're going to defeat the spirit of death. Because we are walking in that realm where we know that we have received life from him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And guess what? We are entering into a season where that life will be made manifest in us and to the world. In us and we in turn to the world. So the world will begin to see a kind of manifest, strange manifestations they have never seen before. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen. Mm. If Jesus, if Jesus' ministry was to give us life, and he has come, and he says, I want you to follow this now. Let me show you this scripture in John, 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. And verse 20. 1 John 5 and verse 20 says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Mm. Get this again. And we know that the son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. His, in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. What is eternal life? that we may know him that is true. This knowledge is not the knowledge you read. This knowledge is the knowledge that is impacted into you by the Holy Ghost himself. That's why it's important you open your own heart to receive from the Holy Spirit. What do you receive from the Holy Spirit? Knowledge. Knowledge of who? Knowledge of God and Jesus Christ. You remember Jesus said to Judas, you know, Judas has asked that question. You know, that's what about Judas, not Iscariot. He had asked that question. How will you manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus said, it's going to be like this. If a man loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And both of us will come and make our abode in him. That is eternal life. You cannot keep his word when you don't understand it. You cannot keep his word when you don't see it. So he makes it available for us to see. And as we see it, what happens to us? We begin to manifest that life. As we manifest that life, hallelujah, because it comes by knowledge. 
So he says, that we may know him that is true in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. I want to pray for you now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I ask that everyone under the influence of my voice right now, they are receiving the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ in their spirits. They are increasing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ even right now. And this is life eternal. Manifest this life in your children all over the world. You have spoken of this season, Lord. Manifest this in your children. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best day ever. Bye.